Hello, I'm David Gauntler. I'm a Canada Research Chair in the Creative School at Toronto Metropolitan University. And with some amazing colleagues, I run the Creative School's Innovation Studio, home, as you may know, to the Design Fabrication Zone, the Transmedia Zone, and the Fashion Zone. This is a Pecha Kucha talk that I did at the Rubik's Research Showcase in 2023. We look to creative pioneers like Janelle Monet, authentic but challenging, in the centre but also experimental and pushing the margins. I really liked how Janelle Monet said, when I'm doing my thing and making a platform, I'm thinking about that black girl or that queer boy who don't really think they fit in. I'm always thinking about them first. You know when you have to do an abstract for a thing but it's months away so who knows what you will want to say when it's time. So writing an abstract for this, but back in 2022, I was anxious about a live event I had said I would do, but also sort of enjoying the anxiety. I thought that was interesting, so I called it uncomfortable creativity. I do actually have some straightforward academic things, my brand new book, Creativity. It's a paperback, a hardback, an ebook, and an audio book, all the formats, and our ongoing Shirk-funded reframing creativity project that I do with Val Duarte. Actual, normal, academic things. But for my December book launch, as well as the normal talking, I'd said that I would also be performing live music for the first time in my life. Is it a good idea to gather together a load of colleagues and friends and interested strangers and do something vulnerable and probably humiliating that they didn't ask for without ever trying it out on some kind of smaller scale first? No. But obviously I was excited, as well as fearful, both things together, I had done this thing knowingly, but it was piling everybody into an aeroplane that I was going to fly into a cloud called embarrassment and strangeness and shame. I'd already put out some music, again for the first time, earlier last year. Music I'd been making over the previous two years. Because, you know, you can. New creative challenge. But you can spend two years crafting recorded works, you know, at home. That's fine. Then you release them in the world and people will say, Oh, will you be doing concerts now? But crafting a thing over two years, alone in your little home, and then performance, instant, all happening in the moment, in front of people, they're totally different things. Why would you mix them up? It's like assuming that somebody who got a PhD is going to be a good teacher. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Very different things. And so I like this, on the back of Tom Doyle's book about Kate Bush. Of all the quotes that they could put on the back cover, this. She didn't want to be famous. She wanted to make a record. That's very different from wanting to be famous. I'm not sure what this adds up to, but I thought it was interesting. Like, when you're younger, this is me in my University of Leeds office in 1998, you want to do things that will hopefully make you look good and that will go well. Now, I've been doing this a long time. In only two years, it'll be 30 years since my first book. So now, I want more uncertainty and not even like to be... You know, nobody asked for this. Nowadays, I'm more interested in supporting and giving a platform to others. But in my own work, Edward Said did this whole book on how later in life, once established, the most interesting artists aren't trying to secure their legacy, but are free to break off into dissonant and experimental new avenues which shake everything up again. And I still love the outputs and having some new product. But I think the real meaningful part is the process, the journey. Improbably, somewhere recently I called it a practice-based approach to practice. I'm interested in things that didn't go how you expected, but I really don't like that language of fail harder and fail faster in creativity, because they're bringing in a dickish kind of language into something that should be more thoughtful and graceful. They're trying to say something about how the process and what you learn is more important than a winning outcome. But the language is still about outcomes, winners and losers. In the innovation studio, we don't always love the zone learning office with its constant demands for metrics and success data. But the other day at this event, where, by the way, we were very proud to see creative school students Jesse and Adam and Bren talk about their experiences, the head guy from zone learning said, and I nearly fell off my chair, that we have come to realise the ventures are vehicles, not destinations. I thought that was really nice. It's literally not about where you're going. The journey might be uncomfortable and challenging at times. You push on and that's your learning. We're not measuring anything else. 
In the practice-based PhD program that we run here, you come to realise the whole definition of it very much rests on the process, not the outputs. Because we'd love you to make an outstanding innovative film or product or artwork, but people make innovative films and products and artworks all the time and they don't get a PhD for them. So what's the difference? The difference lies in the journey, not the end product. In practical terms, it means documenting a process of thought and research and experimentation and going back around and doing it again. In emotional and philosophical terms, it requires a commitment to not being too sure, too soon, that you've finished. There's a thing that comes up in my book, and it really stayed with me, I'm not fully sure why, about the definition of sound as a noun. The other kind of sound. A narrow passage of water between the mainland and an island, or between two larger bodies of water. You can think of music as a river system, flowing and dividing, sometimes combining, sometimes vanishing underground. But there's an electric stillness to a sound, shifting and changing, sparkling in the light, deep and dark below, but not leading to a goal. A passage of water between two larger bodies of water, something, as Simon Raynell says, without precisely defined boundaries that takes from and gives back to the expanses around it in a process of ongoing exchange. There's something about staying within the moments of the journey which seems more kind and equitable. I don't want to focus on your outcomes. I want to know about how you're feeling in this right now and how we can do the insides of things better rather than just trying to make them look good. That's it. Thank you.